Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and I just got the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro in and I have them specced out with different configurations. So I have the 14 inch with the base model M1 Pro processor. Uh, that's the weaker processor with eight CPU cores and 14 GPU cores. And then on the 16 inch model, I have the better M1 Pro processor that has the 10 core CPU and then of course the full 16 core GPU. So for this video, I kind of want to go over the differences between the 14 and the 16 inch model. And then I also want to benchmark both of these laptops and see how much of a difference is there really between the base model uh, eight core M1 Pro chip and the more expensive 10 core M1 Pro chip. So I think this will be a very helpful video for anyone deciding between the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro and then for people deciding if this chip upgrade is actually worth it. So let's do the benchmarks a little bit later in the video uh, because I wanna talk about the differences between the 14 and the 16 inch model because there's actually not that many. So obviously the first thing is the size, right? The 14 inch laptop is smaller than the 16 inch laptop. It's gonna be more portable. It weighs 3.5 pounds. The 16 inch weighs 4.7 pounds. So there's pros and cons to getting one or the other. With the 14 inch, you're getting a much more portable form factor with a pretty nice display size, 14.2 inches, that's a good display size. Uh, on the 16 inch, obviously it's bigger, it's less portable, but hey, it's a bigger display, right? A bigger display is always better. And yeah, when I was switching between using both of these devices, I could really appreciate the new display on the 16 inch model, especially because it's just so much bigger. Speaking of the displays, besides the size difference, both of them are exactly the same. So they're both uh, mini LED ProMotion 120 Hertz displays. And not only are they very smooth and responsive, being able to adjust that uh, refresh rate all the way up to 120 hertz, but they also just look fantastic. I, I cannot do it justice on this video. If you go into an Apple store, just take a look at these displays for like a second. They are gorgeous. And they are even better, I think, than the iPad Pro uh, because I was doing these uh, HDR tests and when I was looking at all like the colors and the black levels, I didn't notice any blooming to the point where I specifically loaded up a video test where it was a white square going around the screen with all, all black. And that was a good way to see if there was any blooming. And to my eyes, I don't know if this will capture on video, but to my eyes, I did not see any haloing effect or any blooming on these mini LED displays. So they are very, very high quality. Um, these might be some of the highest quality laptop displays out there, quite frankly, with the combination of the mini LED display tech and of course the fast ProMotion display. Another difference to note here that I really can't test right now because these computers are just out, I still need to spend a lot more time with them, is battery life. So I wanna just let people know the 16 inch does have a better battery life. Apple gives an official rating on their website uh, for 21 hours of video playback and 14 hours of wireless web. And the 14 inch only gets 17 hours of video playback and then 11 hours of wireless web. It's just another difference to note because the 16 inch is bigger, they could put a much bigger battery in it. So that is another difference we should note. I just personally haven't tested it yet, but based on other reviews and stuff, it does seem to be true, 16 inch better battery. I should also mention that the power brick on the base model 13 inch uh, is a 67 watt. You can spend $20 more to get it to a 97 watt, but then the 16 inch MacBook Pro by default comes with a massive 140 watt power brick. So that is also another difference to look out for. Other than that, both of these computers can be configured exactly the same way. Um, so really the only thing I was wondering going into this is if there would be a speaker difference. That was one of the things where I'm like, okay, typically the bigger laptop always had the better speakers. But on Apple's spec page, it both list these laptops as having the same speaker system. So I loaded up a test and uh, it was interesting because I think they sounded very similar. And based on all the measurement tools that I was using, um, it seemed that both of these laptops at least got to the same loudness level in terms of the decibel. I use my Apple Watch for the reading, so I don't know how accurate that is, but they both seem to be hitting around the same volume. So they both get around the same loudness. Um, I'll let you listen to this test with your own ears. I don't know if it's gonna pick up that well over this microphone, we'll see. Oh, 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 
Now, to my ears, if you were to ask me as I was testing both of these laptops, I want to say that the 16 inch just had maybe the tiniest bit more bass, but I'm kind of not sure if that was like a placebo effect. These were very, very close in sound quality. Like if you were asking me, uh, should I get the 16 inch over the 14 inch for the sound quality? Even though I kind of felt like I did hear a slight difference, I would say just don't worry about it. Pick the size that you want. Both of these speakers, they're great. They sound really, really good. I think you're gonna be happy with either one. Okay, now that we've settled the differences really, or the very minor differences between the 14 and the 16 inch, let's go into these performance benchmarks because even though this 14 inch can be configured with the same M1 Pro chip that is in the 16 inch model, um, this is the base model version, so it does have the weaker 8-core CPU and 14-core GPU, and then the one on the 16-inch, you don't have that option. When you get the base model on the 16-inch, it just comes with the 10-core CPU and the 16-core GPU. So the first thing I wanted to do is load up our usual Geekbench. So let's see the Geekbench scores. And as we ran this Geekbench test, we could see that both of these computers performed the same pretty much in single-core score. 1761 on the 14 inch and then 1754 on the 16 inch, both within the margin of error. But you can see quite a difference here in the multi-core performance, which makes sense. The 16 inch has two extra CPU cores. So 14 inch got a score of 9,793, not bad, but the 16 inch got 12,438. Uh, I always like to bring up this point for reference that's more powerful than uh, some of the configurations of a Mac Pro. That's awesome. Uh, so both of these CPUs look to be pretty powerful. Obviously in multi-core performance, having two extra CPU cores is gonna give you a higher score. But I wanted to load up another more intensive benchmark uh, this time we're gonna use Cinebench because this runs a lot longer. We can see if there's any thermal issues between the 14 and 16 inch, and then we can also kind of see uh, what the score is gonna be. So as we did Cinebench, obviously you can see that the 16 inch model finished first. Obviously it's a faster CPU. So with the multi-core on Cinebench, the 16 inch got a 12,298. And then the 14 inch came in behind it, with a 9,487. Now, as I ran both of these benchmarks, I did not hear the fan spin up once, which is crazy to me. Uh, so it seems that at least for these M1 Pro chips, both of these laptops have a great thermal design, uh, which honestly doesn't surprise me after using the M1. All right, so we are seeing CPU differences. This is probably where we're gonna see the biggest difference, uh, but there's also two extra GPU cores in the 16 inch model. So let's load up some graphics benchmarks as well. So first I wanted to test the metal scores out in Geekbench and we can see the scores here are very similar. So with the 14 inch, we're getting a 37,160 metal score. And then on the 16 inch, a 38,024 metal score. So those numbers are super close together. Uh, but let's do an open CL score in Geekbench as well. So we can see if there's a bigger difference here and there's a more of a difference here. So with the open CL score, we're seeing 31,301 on the 14 inch. And then on the 16 inch, we're seeing 34,343. Next, I wanted to run my usual Heavens benchmark, which is a GPU benchmark. But I gotta be honest with you, I did face some issues here. Uh, with my testing and methodology. So I try to custom set the resolution because obviously uh, the 16 inch has a higher native resolution than the 14 inch and that would actually affect graphics performance. So I wanted it to be even, but every time I set a custom resolution with the Heaven Benchmark, it just kept defaulting to the system native resolution on both the 14 and 16 inch. So. Uh, when I ran this benchmark, the 14 inch actually scored higher because it was using a lower resolution on this test. But just in case this is helpful for you, uh, know that with the native resolution on the 14 inch, it got 102 frames per second, a score of 2,571, minimum FPS of 16.4, max FPS of 190.2. Now on the 16 inch, again, this is running at a higher resolution, uh, but it does have the extra two GPU cores, but it you know, you can kind of see that these two extra GPU cores didn't make like a huge difference to the point where you're running it on a higher resolution and it's still beating the 14 inch because it didn't. So it got a 99.1 FPS 
2,496 on the score, minimum 15, minimum, minimum FPS of 15.5 and a max FPS of 197.2. All right, usual disclaimer, I did a final test to try and see real world usage. Now I know there's always gonna be those comments and if you're watching this video, don't leave this comment. I know not everyone's a video editor, it's what I do, it's my expertise. I use Final Cut and I can test export times and that kind of gives me a real world indication of what, you know, this power on the MacBook Pro is getting me. So I know a lot of you have other tests that you want me to run. Um, maybe leave them in the comments below on other tests you recommend and maybe I can use that for a future video. But for now, this is just gonna be a video export test. So I loaded up Final Cut Pro on both machines, made sure to turn background rendering off, and I want it to export a 10 minute, very simple 4K clip in H.264. And this is kind of interesting. So I think most of you are expecting the 16 inch to win, but it doesn't. Now it doesn't lose because it actually ends up in a tie with both of these laptops basically exporting the same file in four minutes and 40 seconds. Now, I think the reason for this is because Apple went over in their presentation on how they actually put an encoder for ProRes and H.264 in the M1 Pro chip. So there is already a video encoder in these chips and even though, you know, the 16 inch has a bigger CPU and a better GPU, when you're doing like a video export test, the M1 Pro just uses that encoder that's already just built into the chip because it's gonna be faster. And yeah, there's no difference if you're exporting to that file type. That's kind of cool. So I wanted to try this also with ProRes, that's a different file type. Uh, and then Apple really touted the effects of ProRes exporting with the new M1 Pro chips and M1 Max chips. So uh, let's see if there's a difference here. Now, as we do it with the 14 and 16 inch, they're looking pretty neck and neck again. Uh, but this time we actually do see a difference. So the 16 inch does finish faster at one minute and 13 seconds. Uh, but the 14 inch is just a few seconds later. It's a minute and 20 seconds to finish uh, that 4K ProRes export. So I think a lot of people were very concerned uh, with their purchases. I saw in my comment section, uh, they wanted to save money. They could only afford the $2,000 base model of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And they were really worried about that chip binning process between uh, the CPU and the weaker GPU. And you know, in these benchmarks, you are seeing higher multi-core performance. And again, that final cut test, right? I just said it uses an encoder built on the M1 Pro chip. So if you're a video editor, you're very happy if you got the base model. But I'm also looking at these benchmarks and I'm just, you know, looking at the normal system performance. And I think if you got that base CPU, there's like no reason to be worried. Like I was even going into final cut and loading up like multiple streams of 4K. And like both of these machines, like I was gonna actually like test, like, okay, how many streams of 4K can both of these run before they start to like hiccup? And like, I got bored adding the streams of 4K. Like they just ran like a ridiculous amount and there was no further reason to test them. Like no one's gonna be doing this. Like it was a stupid test. Like that's how good these machines are though. Like they are ridiculously good. Um, so I don't think you should worry whether or not you got any of these different configurations of the M1 Pro, you might be able to eke out a little bit better GPU performance on the higher binned M1 Pro, maybe a little bit more CPU performance. But based on my testing, based on what we're seeing here, it doesn't look like a major deal breaker difference. So be happy with the configuration you got if you save money. If you got a little bit extra power out of it, I guess you can be happy too. But the real question that we have to answer now is, the M1 Pro versus the M1 Max. Uh, I don't have the fully specced out MacBook Pro in quite yet, but it should be coming very soon. So if you want to see a video where we put the M1 Pro against the M1 Max, Mac, uh, stay tuned for a future video. But I really hope this video was helpful in helping you not only decide between a 14 and a 16 inch MacBook Pro, but also helping you decide uh, which processor to get. I, it was a very confusing decision this time around. Apple just had so many different processors out there. And I, you know, I was looking at it too and I was worried. I'm like, oh, there's a, there's a weaker M1 Pro out there. Is that actually any good? 
So I'm very happy that we could see in this video, at least with my testing, maybe, you know, maybe there's a better test out there, but at least with my testing, we can see there's not a big major difference between both of those chips. All right, everyone. Again, hope you found the video helpful. Hope you liked it. If you did, hey, already threw a thumbs up. Give me a like. And uh, hey, if you want to see more, I got a lot more videos coming. Again, M1 Pro versus M1 Max. Uh, probably going to do an M1 Pro versus M1 chip video as well. And uh, we'll see all that in future videos. So make sure you're subscribed. A lot of stuff coming. I'm tired. It's late. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.